<sighs> Hello everyone, hopefully you're all well, hopefully you're all safe. Welcome along to the channel, it is your boy Brad here. And it is the day after the greatest robbery in history. Well, not the greatest robbery in history, but it's close up there. Because Arsenal Football Club, again, again have been robbed by VAR. Now, I'm going to get onto that in a bit. But the game ended one all. But there's one place where I'm going to start. And, oh my god. Granite fucking Xhaka. Granite Xhaka. Where the hell do I start with this? Literally, everyone was blaming Leno for this yesterday. And, <sighs> I'm sick to death of it. How can you blame Leno? That is the way that we've been playing. Out from the back. Passing out from the back. Xhaka made himself available for the pass. And he then took an extra touch, which he did not need to do. He should have just sprayed it straight out wide. First time. Instead, he takes the stupidest of touches. And the worst thing is, he's actually looking at that side where Chris Wood is fucking stood. And then, he then decides to try and bend it like Beckham round him. But no, it hits him on the hip. It goes in the net and it's 1-1. But from that point on, it fell off. We fell off the bot. We fell off the boat. But before that, we got the early goal. Abamian, great start. After that, we could have been two or three up. Saka with two decent chances. Missed them both. On another day, he'd have probably put them in the back of the net. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. But then the calamity. The calamity happens just before half time. Just before half time, where your focus needs to be up, instead, he decides to go out like Krusty the Clown, bend it round the, the attacker like Beckham, it hits the attacker on the hip, and then it ends up going in the back of the net. And then people have got the cheek to sit there and blame Leno for it. What a fucking joke. But then, but then, <laughs> here we go again. V-A-R. The focus is on V-A-R again. What is a handball? What is a handball now? Literally, I'm fucking fuming about this. The second decision, perfectly right. He overruled it, rescinded the red card. It was right. It hit him on the shoulder. It's not a handball. That was right. But the one with Pepe... Eric Peters, yeah, he stood about a yard away, but his arm is out here. His arm is literally stretched out like this. It hits him on the arm. It's a fucking penalty. Stonewall, there and there. It's a straightforward decision. But VAR, the knobheads, decide to go, oh, it's not a penalty. What a joke. Again, robbed by VAR. How many more times is it going to happen to us? And I'm not... Saying there's an agenda against Arsenal. Because this happens on a regular basis to other teams. It is a joke. It is a joke. We were robbed of three points. We were robbed of three points. Because even after Burnley scored, they did fuck all to get back and try and get in front. They were just hoovering it on field doing Stoke C football. Jesus Christ. Literally. I am still fuming. It is a disgrace. VAR, the referees that are running it are corrupt as fuck. The referees are as thick as pig shit. It is a joke. Bring it down a notch now because I'm going to go on to the player ratings in a minute. But I'm going to touch on this because I love how some people, some people are blaming Nicola Pepe for the... The goal, the Shaq, the Shaq has scored because he missed a, a simple chance. Yeah, everyone misses opportunities. But there is one stat that I have seen, that I have seen, ever since 2016-17, Shaq has made the most errors leading to goals than any other player in the Premier League. It's time to cut his losses, I think. I think it's time to move on from Granite Xhaka. 
I think that is it. That is the straw that broke the camel's back. Literally, we need a centre mid that can be commanding alongside Thomas Partey. But, let's turn it down a notch. I've got that out on my system. VR's a joke. The referees are corrupt. It is a fucking mess. It needs to be changed. Like, for instance, they changed the handball rule where if someone handballs it and it leads to a goal, then that's okay now. If it's like if his arm's there, down by his side, and the ball ricochets and it leads to a goal, that was not that was given as a handball against Fulham against Spurs. But now it's been scrapped. But it's a wonder that the FA don't get their asses together, sack off all the referees, get rid of all the shit that's in this fucking country in terms of referees, and bring in some fresh faces. Because the moral code is that the referees are a bag of shit. They couldn't run the VAR technology blindfolded. But that is it. I've had enough of fucking talking about VAR and shit like that. Let's get into the player ratings. Starting goal, Bert Leno. He saved us. He saved us in that second half. If Chris Wood had buried that chance, that would have been catastrophic. That would have been daylight robbery. And even the Eric Peters one, just after the penalty. He tried looping the ball of Leno and he managed to tip it over the bar. I'm giving Leno a 7 for that performance. Literally could have pulled up a deck chair in the first half and had a cup of tea and read the paper. Next up on the right, Callum Chambers. This was the surprise selection for me, but he didn't do too badly. But I understood why Mikel put him in there because of the physical threat that Burnley possessed with Chris Wood. They wanted an extra body in there alongside Louise and Murray. So they put Callum Chambers in there, which I am not disagreeing with. But for me, he's not a right back. He didn't get forward enough. He didn't offer anything going forward, but he offers something in the middle, which I am happy with. So I'm going to give Callum a six for his performance. Next to him, David Luiz, solid as a rock. He dealt with every ball that came in. He dealt with Chris Wood easy, so I'm going to give him a seven. Same goes for Pablo Murray. He was immense. Again, he was amazing. I'm going to give him a seven. Kieran Tierney on the left. Didn't really offer much going forward. Had a few moments here and there, but crosses weren't really that good. So uh, I'm going to give him a six for his performance. Um, Granite Xhaka. One. And that's for putting his kit on the right way. What else did he do? What else did he do? He was solid enough, but then the chocolate melted when he booted the ball against Chris Wood's hip and it went straight into the net. That's where the straw broke the camel's back. One. Move on. Thomas Partey. Um, he looked a bit rusty. Passing was a bit off. Well, it wasn't a bit off. It was way off. Some of it, but one moment, one moment where he really did pull it off was the pass that he played for Ober over the top. That was a beautiful ball. But he was solid, and he set up the first goal as well. He was he played the part where he ran through the midfield, played it into William, and then he played it into Ober and finished off. So I give uh, Thomas Partey a six. Um, on the right, Bukayo Saka, he looked off the boil. Two chances he missed. He looked really shaky. He was all over the place. Committing fouls wasn't the best of performances. I'm giving Saka a five. Um, in the middle, Martin Odegaard. Um, quiet afternoon by his standards. Uh, but um, he, he did have the worst of games, but didn't really offer much. So I'm going to give him a f- five. Um, on the left, William didn't have the worst game. Trapped Matt well, assisted the goal, so I give him a six. And Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, I'm going to give a seven because he tried his hardest. But of course, what can you do when players are making mistakes behind you? You can't really do much. So I give over a seven for his performance. Some really good runs off the ball as well, and some of the passes that were created for him, really good. Um, on to the subs. First of all, Alexandre Lacazette, standard five. Didn't really have much time to work with. Um, next up, who was who were the other subs? Who were the other subs? Now, Sabios five, and the last one, Nicola Pepe. 
Should have scored. Had a shot that hit the bar. Was involved in the uh, spot kick, which wasn't given. But standard five again. Uh, Mikel Arteta, I'm going to give him a six. Team selection was okay, but didn't really... Um, didn't really cover himself in glory in the second half because the start of the second half was really flat. It just wasn't quick enough. The movement wasn't quick enough like it was in the first half. But what can you do against a team that just sits back, plays a low block? You've got to try and break them down. But I thought when he took Odegaard off, that's the one that really did me because him and William, when they got took off, I was like, why are they going off? How did Granite Xhaka complete the 90 minutes? That's, that's what I don't understand. I understand Thomas Partey going off. Because he did, he did look rusty, but Thomas, but Xhaka, he should not have completed the 90 minutes. He should not have completed the 90 minutes. At all. At all. What a joke. But anyway, we roll on to Thursday, and my next video will be out Wednesday for the preview and team selection. Uh, my predicted 11 for the game against Olympiakos. So let's hope we can get back to winning ways on Thursday. So guys, till next time, you know what to do by now. Subscribe to the channel for more content and we'll see you next time.